Hey there, I'm Martin Abelong, and I wanted to make a short video where I talk to you about the most recent creation I've made in Dreams on my PlayStation 5. So, um, about a week ago, I think, I saw this um, amazing Unreal Engine 5 creation of a Japanese train station made by the artist Lorenzo Drago. Um, and it's honestly one of the most impressive CG environments I've ever seen. Um, and of course, in Unreal Engine 5 with Lumen, um, lighting is incredibly beautiful. And that inspired me to try and make a version of a similar scene um, in Dreams on my PlayStation 5. And a lot of you probably don't know Dreams um, already. Uh, and in my opinion, everybody should know about Dreams because it's a very, very powerful piece of creative software. And Dreams is actually um, PlayStation 4 software, so even if I'm running it on my PlayStation 5, it's just running in backwards compatibility mode. Here's the, here's the scene, and as you can see, I'm using the, the DualSense controller to move around in the scene. Um, all right, so this is all well and good, and you can see I can walk around. I made some logic here that enables the viewer to zoom into the details of the scene. Um, you can walk up the stairs here, obviously. Um, and I even also made a horror version of this scene. And I'm not going to show that here, just out of fear that somebody might not like stuff like that. But if you play the scene in Dreams, you can definitely check out the, the scary version of the scene. Um, but as you can see now, the, the, the lighting changed here and we can actually walk up the stairs. I even made a little bit of graffiti on the walls. And I can make that appear as uh, the viewer is walking up the stairs. So um, let's walk all the way up here. And that then exits the experience. Let's try and restart that. I'm going to go back into the scene. And then I'm going to go into edit mode. And you can do that at, at any point in a Dreams creation. And you might ask yourself, uh, what is Dreams? So Dreams is a creative software living on the PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation 4 Pro and on the PlayStation 5. And it basically enables you to make games, music, art um, directly on a PlayStation using either the, the DualSense or the DualShock controller or in my case, the move controllers, which I have here. Um, and the move controllers are probably best known for uh, either PlayStation VR games or for things like um, Just Dance or, or similar titles. Um, but in Dreams, it allows you to sculpt with both hands. As you can see here, I can control these two fluffy creatures using the move controllers. And I can move around like this. Um, I can move elements around. So like the, the train station platform here, you can see I can scale that up and down using, using gestures on my hand. By holding down a button and rotating the controller, I can scale things up and down. And there's a lot of smart gestures like that. Um, so for instance, when I'm, when I'm sculpting, go in here, I pick a cube. As you can see, I can then, by rotating my hand like this, I can rotate the sculpt. Uh, I can change the size by, again, by holding down a button and scaling things up and down. I can change the size of this box. And everything here works in VR as well. So at any point, I could put on the PlayStation VR 1 headset and I could start sculpting things. And then you see here, by just tapping the controller against each other, I can switch between adding or subtracting things to my sculpt. So I can quite quickly then start to build up elements here for my scene. Um, I can obviously go in and add a little bit of color to the sculpt. Again, using gestures, I can open a color wheel and I can then, you know, start coloring elements here. And of course, this is just totally freehand here. So the sculpt is a little bit wonky and you can, you can not also work with much greater precision using a guide system in Dreams. So you have grid snap, you have precise move, and you have various different ways of making sure that things are a bit more sharp. Um, and then you can um, 
You can add texture using either a smear tool where you actually smear into the, the sculpt. Uh, so there's no texture maps in Dreams. There's no uh, like uh, displacement maps or normal maps or anything. Everything is actually um, proper sculpts here, which is pretty cool, I think. So if you look at the, the ground, for instance, let's take a ground element here. You can tell that this is actually real, like it's real uh, forms, right? It, it isn't just a, a normal map or something like that. So in this way, it's actually a little bit like the Nanite system in Unreal Engine 5. Um, and by the way, the Unreal Engine 5 um, core was actually inspired by some of um, the Dreams engine work. Um, so that I find that pretty amazing, actually. But anyways, let's go back to our small sculpt here. So now we have this shape. I'm not sure what this is going to be, though. It's just a weird thing hanging off the platform. But uh, I hope it serves the purpose of, purpose of actually showing you what's going on here. So then again, using the move controllers, I can pick a color. I can I can bump the, the two uh, glowing spheres against each other here to change the shape of, um, of the, the object I'm coloring with. And then I can just, you know, start, I can actually start to texture this thing. Um, I can change the opacity of the, the coloring. I can very quickly go in and pick color to do like this. And I can even make a color blend, which is really, really cool. I can go in here, I can drag a color over. Uh, I can then pick another color, drag that over here, and then just give this thing a spin, uh, feeling like a true digital version of Bob Ross here. And then you can see as I'm coloring, the, the colors switch be, uh, between the different choices I make. So this is pretty cool. Um, and then once I'm happy with the, the shape here, I can go in and I can actually clone this thing like so. And I can even multi-clone. So very quickly, I can start to build up shape. Um, making this into some kind of weird tunnel, maybe even. So, as you can see, it's very responsive and very fast. It's by far the, fast, uh, by far the most like quick way to build 3D that I've ever experienced. And I think, I think more 3D tools should have these two-handed controls, even outside of VR, as uh, I'm, I'm doing here. All right, so that's a, a very, very quick tunnel here. Um, then you obviously have things like yeah, you have spotlights, you have cameras, you have game controls. You can, as I mentioned before, you can make full games here in Dreams and people have made amazing games, both platform games, uh, RPGs, um, all sorts of different genres, actually. And the, the width and breadth of what the community has created is just mind blowing. But let's see. So I'm going to try and move the spotlight around here. Like so, you can change properties of that, of course, and everything happens very quickly, as you can tell. So I could then, you know, copy the light source down here to get more lights in the tunnel. So again, a very, very fast way of working, right? But let's just undo all of this because I don't need all that. Um, but the, again, you can make you can make a lot of copies in Dreams. And obviously now I'm approaching the limit of what can be in the scene because it's already quite detailed. Um, but the engine is is capable of, of of making or like supporting very very detailed scenes. Um, and I guess again as you can see, there's various different gadgets floating around here. If you're working with others, I I would definitely recommend you cleaning things up a little bit more. When I'm working just for myself, I usually don't care too much about that. Um, but as you as you can see here, you have um, you have different gadgets here. In this case, I have a trigger zone here that controls the painting on the wall. So you can actually see here if I scale the if I scale this sphere of influence down a little bit, then as I move into that sphere, it's the gadget is set to register the camera, uh, basically. So. You can see here now that the, the painting then appears as I get closer to that trigger zone. Um, so 
for me as an artist, uh, I come from a background of working with uh, digital art for like 20 years for clients. Um, so for me to have a tool like this that allows me to that quickly go in and work um, in 3D without having to worry about too many technical things. Um, I'm just directly in the scene working on my artwork. It's just amazing, you know. So say for instance, I wanted to like make a logo or something on this guy's hat here. Just paint that again using the move controllers directly in the scene. And now you'll see then, because that was the latest brush stroke I made, uh, that will appear at the end of this cycle. And of course, with paint here, you can do all sorts of interesting things. I could make the paint stroke glow, or I could make like a, a golden brush stroke instead. So say we wanted to make this gold, I'll just go in here, change the properties. Um, let's add a bit of reflection. So. Now, depending on your lighting setup, it might be a little bit difficult to tell that this is supposed to be gold, but now you can actually see it, right? And look how quickly I was able to do that. And that is the power of dreams, I think, enabling people to quickly try out ideas. And, and granted, this isn't on the extremely high level of detail that you can get in other game engines, but I think for most things, I would rather actually be able to quickly build my worlds and tell my stories than I would want to care about things like very highly detailed 3D scans and stuff like that. Um, so I think the immediate uh, nature of working with both both hands in a 3D world like this is, is um, pretty special for dreams. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to give you a very quick glimpse of, um, of this scene dreams. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ping me on either of the, the social media channels you have here at the top of the screen. Um, yeah, and I look forward to talking with you about dreams. Bye.